The Fishing News is sponsored by these fine partners. I'm Jim Hutchinson with the New Jersey Delaware Bay video fishing forecast for this week. It's January 18th, 2024, and we are officially 43 days away from the opening of the New Jersey Back Bay Striper Fishery in New Jersey. 43 days, 43, that was Richard Petty's number. It was Richard Petty who once said, you know, now they're getting so politically correct, you can't even stick your tongue out at someone. Well, Richard Petty, consider this, or this week's New Jersey Delaware Bay Edition video fishing forecast as a big raspberry for all of us, and especially to some of you Long Islanders who like to listen in, and some of the ones who are on both sides of the great striped bass divide who have been working so diligently to get me canceled in recent years. Loosen up your keyboard fingers, folks. We've got some pretty ugly news to report this week on the striper front. It's worthy of discussion, debate, dissection, and divisiveness. You probably saw on the Fisherman's social media feed earlier this week, or perhaps in our e-news alert on Tuesday. I can't bury it, I can't sugarcoat it, I can't deny it ever existed because I simply can't cancel this away. It's information that's coming from the New York State Department of Environmental Conservation. So before we get into the latest reports, uh, slim that they are right now, Tog, White Perch, and a couple of striped bass. Before we talk about the upcoming events throughout the region and give a quick weather outlook for the weekend ahead. Let's dig through this news from New York, the annual Young of the Year striped bass surveys on the Hudson River related to the 2023 spawning class of striped bass. First, a little background. For the past 45 years, the New York State Department of Environmental Conservation, DEC, has been running a Young of the Year survey on the Hudson River. They use a seine to catch newly hatched striped bass to be counted, measured, and then released back again. The annual haul, taking into account a small sampling error, has shown the Hudson spawn to be at or above the long-term average seven of the last 10 years, and that's good news. But if you look at the DEC chart that's on the screen right now, you'll see that 2014, 2020, and even 22, 2022, show decent returns from those jumbo stripers that arrive, they stage on the Raritan Bay, and then charge up the Hudson River to make baby stripers every spring. But when you look at the DEC chart, you can see all those jumbo stripers being caught and released in North Jersey on the Raritan Bay every spring that perhaps they were celibate in 2023, simply not in the mood, or the spawn itself just didn't happen. And if it did, some type of environmental factor in 2023 caused those baby striped bass to disappear. But this survey doesn't say there are no stripers to be caught to put a bend in the rod. That's not what this survey is saying. It's just saying that the baby stripers on the Hudson didn't show up where the DEC was hoping to find them and where they found them for the past 45 years. This, of course, comes on the heels of some pretty dismal news coming out of the Chesapeake as well. Information re released this past fall by the Maryland Department of Natural Resources, DNR, uh, that showed that 2023 was equally bad for baby striper production on the Chesapeake and the Maryland portion of the Chesapeake Bay as well. In fact, it was about the worst in management history. That was in Maryland, of course. But Virginia portion of the Chesapeake was also down, according to the Virginia Institute of Marine Science, VMS. They tracked the worst juvenile striped bass index in over a decade on the Virginia portion of the Chesapeake. That's three out of three, right? One final piece of Young of the Year juvenile striped bass information, it comes from research here in the state of New Jersey, New Jersey Division of Fish and Wildlife. Those numbers gathered uh, from sampling at approximately 287 stations along the Delaware from June through October, ranked 2023 as 38th out of 43 years of sampling in that striped bass nursery. So what does this all mean? Well, first and foremost, you'll find all these charts and the write-up this week at thefisherman.com. I wrote it up over the weekend on Monday morning. It was posted in, in the e-news. So you can read that and see all these charts. But just keep in mind that the powers that be, the Atlantic States Marine Fisheries Commission, ASMFC, when they look at the primo striper producing estuaries along the Atlantic coast, the Hudson and the Chesapeake 
uh, if either one of these shows bad results in a season, that upsets the entire apple cart. It means it's all bad. Right, So on a year-to-year -year basis, we could say the Chesapeake is down, the Hudson's up, or vice versa, but this year, they're all bad. And with both water bodies producing dismal results in 2023, uh, in terms of baby bass, you see where I'm going here, right? You can shoot the messenger if you like, but ASMFC will meet next week in Arlington, Virginia. And on Wednesday, January 24th, the ASMFC Atlantic Striped Bass Management Board will meet in the afternoon from 1.45 until 4.45 p.m. to consider final approval of draft addendum two to the Striped Bass Fishery Management Plan. And that's when they're gonna select all the various management measures that have been discussed over the last several months. As I said last week, before this Hudson River announcement, the slot striper regulation should continue barring another management bombshell. Well, here's your bombshell, folks. I have no idea what could possibly come out of this, but in another week, we'll know more about what our 2024 striper regulations will look like. One thing is for certain, once ASMFC and the fisheries managers complete their charts uh, for the 2024 stock assessment update, when those red vertical bars are added to represent the one-year-old fish in 2022, in 2023, and then in 2024, and how that contributes to the rebuilding deadline of 2029, we'll be talking about these spawning results for years to come. And we might just need Detectives Benson, Tutuola, and Stabler to investigate what caused our beloved striped bass fishery and access to it to implode. Tog, blackfish, still the best option right now in the New Jersey, Delaware Bay region. And for higher boats, the Jamaica 2, for example, continuing to press offshore in search of these reef and wreck species. Though up until this week's cold snap here at the Jersey shore, I still heard from some folks like Kyle at Fisherman Supply in Point Pleasant, who heard of a few togs still being caught along the railing at the canal. We've had a lot of nasty weather especially high wind and heavy seas in the last two weeks, three weeks, uh, but boats are still sailing when they can, when they can find a good weather window. Now, in this week's open boat, Jenny has been sitting down with a few people, folks that are still open, and some of her mentors, to talk about blackfish jigging. This week, she's got the lowdown on finessing a jig to work a, a good blackfish bite using lighter tackle. Here's open boat this week with Jenny Ackerman. Hi everyone, welcome to this week's Open Boat. This is part one of the Mentor Talk. Today I'm here with Ray from Grumpy's. He is my mentor for not only blackfish jigging for like a ton of saltwater fishing tactics that I do, like pitching up current, just black fishing. And today he's gonna to be talking about jigging for blackfish. Ray has caught some absolute slobs on the jig. Yes. Before the jig or even black fishing was publicly known, Ray is an absolute pro with jig fishing. And um, basically, Ray, what is your go-to setup? You have it here. So I start with the rod. So I love something seven foot, something rated up to about two ounces. This particular setup is a seven foot. Um, I teamed it up with a 3000 size reel. 20 pound braid. Braid is probably the most important thing when it comes to jigging because if you have too heavy of a braid, it's going to be tough to get that lighter jig to the bottom. So <clears throat> something up to two ounces, seven foot, 3000 series reel. Some guys will do 4000 series and I do 20 pound braid. Okay. So how heavy of a jig do you go? What's like your limit on ounces? For so a jig? there's tons of different styles of jigs out there right now. Um, a lot of the jigs that you'll see in, in tackle shops are going to be in that one ounce to two ounce range. I don't go anything bigger than two ounces when it comes to jigs. I think that kind of defeats the purpose of the whole thing. Um, I always start off with a one ounce jig, depending on the conditions. If it starts scoping out, then I'll go to something a little bit heavier, but I always start with a one ounce jig. So another little debate within the black fishing world is the type of bait that you choose. There's white leggers, there's green crabs, there's hermits, there's spiders, there's even some shrimp. Yep. Secret shrimp, if you don't know. Yep. Um, so what, with like a crab for like a jig, like with a rig, you can do a ton of different, yeah. you can do two halves or whatever. How do you bait a jig? So I have like a mental checklist in my head when I go black fishing. I always start with the whole crab. 
I'm always looking for that big fish when you first get set up. Uh, so I'll start with a whole crab, crush it up, step on it a little bit, see what happens. And the biggest thing with blackfish that I can recommend to everyone is watch around you too. Don't be afraid to watch other people that are on the boat because they might be doing something different and getting a bite. So I always start with a whole crab, I step on it, see what happens. If it starts, you know, you don't feel anything, no scratches, no bites, then I go to a half a crab, step on it. Stepping on it is probably the most important thing. It just mushes it up a little bit, uh, especially this time of the year in January, the tide get a little bit lethargic. They want a softer bait. Uh, so whole crab, then to a half a crab. Mugging is also another yes. excellent thing to yes. do. You can't beat gracing someone's presence on the other side of the boat and just giving them a nice hi, hello, and then setting the hook on yep. the fish that they've been finessing There's for the past There's nothing better minutes. than stealing someone other, someone's other fish, you know, yes. someone's fish. It's, 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 it's very satisfying. Gentlemen's black fishing, that's yeah. for sure. Yes. So now we're going to go over how to feel a bite with a jig. Yeah, so there's a lot of like misinformation on the web about black fishing, about you got to set the hook before you feel the bite. Uh, that's, that's not true. Um, the thing is when you drop a jig down to the bottom, right out of the gate, you're probably going to feel some scratches. Typically that's for gulls, but that's okay because they're kind of setting the, they're kind of setting it up for the blackfish. Then you'll feel a thump. That's what you want. You don't want, you don't want to set up on the scratches. There's, there's days where blackfish will be a little bit, like I said, finicky and you, you'll feel them scratch it. But most of the time, those little pecks are bergals in the beginning. And then you'll get the thump. That is what you want to set up on, the thump. And when you set up on a blackfish, I would say you have probably like a six to a 10 foot buffer zone. I call it a buffer zone. When you set up on a blackfish and you keep your rod tip high, you never want to lower it. Keep it up high, reel to the fish. That is your best bet to land a big fish, not lower your rod tip. I use full drag. A lot of guys don't agree with that. I use full drag. I want to turn that fish really, really quick. And I think that's the most important thing when it comes to landing these bigger fish on light tackle. Because I tell you what, 10 years ago, I would have laughed at you if fishing a seven foot spinning rod for blackfish. It just wasn't, you know, they, we just didn't do that. So it was heavy conventional rods, 60 pound mono, 60 pound leader. And yeah, I mean, this is just completely different. And I, I personally was the one that laughed about fishing for blackfish with jigs i i <laughs> when i see people on the boat i'm like what the heck it's changed the way we blackfish it's more fun you get more bites it's just the truth you get more bites landing the bigger fish i probably go with a conventional rod but it's just way more fun targeting blackfish with a spin rod all this talk of blackfish has me so excited i wish the weather wasn't so crummy so we can actually go out black fishing yeah but Stay tuned for not next week's open boat, the week after for the part two of the mentor black fishing series, where we talk about rig fishing. So thank you, Ray, again, Anytime. my mentor. Anytime. I'm definitely stopping in Grumpy's Tackle in Seaside Park, New Jersey to stock up on some black fishing jigs. They also have leader and some awesome in-store and custom rods for blackfish jigging and rigging. So stop in and stock up. We'll see you on the water. Yes. So uh, on all that doom and gloom on striped bass that I, uh, I spoke about before, keep in mind that we have the striper limits in place throughout the range. You can keep one from 28 to 31 inches, even now, uh, even though, uh, as long as you're fishing on those front beaches here in New Jersey, right? Out, on out to three miles, but the back bays, the salty rivers, they're closed until March 1st. But it's still worth it if you want to. I mean, we got this report from Grumpy's uh, over the weekend. Barney here checked in with a keeper. He caught in the surf last week in the seaside area. 29 incher on mullet. Yeah, last week, dead sticking. How about that? So yeah, the front side beaches are still in season for striper fishing. You can still head out there on a nice warm day if you'd like. I'm looking outside right now. It's uh, what, the 20s now? Yeah, I'm not doing it, but they're still there. And even though you're restricted, 
from targeting striped bass in the back bays and salty rivers, you can still head out to the front beaches, jump in the buggy, stay warm, throw a couple of casts. Then there is white perch. That's what's happening in the back bays, right? Get bloodworms at True World. Uh, in Bayonne, if you want to uh, look to the Hackensack or some of those piers along the Hudson. Uh, Hook House on Route 37 East. Dennis is there. If you want to try fishing the Toms River, bloodworms at night, that's what's been doing it. Or check in with Dave Scholl at Absecon Bay Sportsman Center, who I spoke to this week. If you're trying the Mullica or the Great Egg, heading up to Tuckahoe someplace. But with this cold snap this week, as Dave and I talked about when doing the reports for thefisherman.com, you can expect there's gonna be a thin layer of ice on some of those favorite water bodies and trying to get a sinker uh, with that blood worm down through the skim ice makes it rather difficult. Um, but it's still worth a shot if you can find some open water. Water levels themselves are up on many rivers and streams throughout the northern and northwest portions of New Jersey because of all the terrible weather, the Passaic River. It's been in headlines a lot in the last week or two, right? Uh, but there are still a few trout options on local streams. Up until this past weekend, water levels in the streams were starting to return to normal, which makes this trout fishing a little bit better. We'll take a look at the upcoming winter show calendar here in New Jersey, Pennsylvania, and New York as well. But first, let's check in with George, the Pocono Outdoors guy. Well, hey, thanks, Jim. Finally, I think we're getting into some more seasonable cold here for all those guys looking to get out and do a little bit of ice fishing. Now, you know, we've had some great temperatures this week if you're looking to get out. Uh, nighttime temps in the teens, even single digits here in the Poconos. Uh, so we should certainly see some of those lakes start to build some good, safe ice. We tell you every year, look for that four inches of ice, guys. Four inches. Uh, don't skimp on it. It's not worth something terrible happening just to get out and do a little fishing one day. So play it safe. Get on those four inches and don't forget all your safety gear. Now also keep in mind some of these bigger lakes like Beltsville and those deeper ones, they're gonna take much, much longer to freeze over. Uh, so be careful getting in some of those areas. Uh, you might have one area frozen and another one not. So just be sure you spud bar all the way out as you get to the spot that you want to fish. So I uh, haven't had too many guys check in with the foul weather this whole week. So hopefully as the ice builds, we'll see some guys get out and maybe we'll see some great ice fishing picks for next week's report. So go out and get on them. But from Pennsylvania, I'm George, your Pocono Outdoors guy. You can fish the ice or you can get the heck out of Dodge. For a Costa Rican update from the Pacific coast near Marina Pesvela in Capos, let's check in with Captain Ben. Guys, how's it going? This is Ben Gilmore from here in Costa Rica and Jackpot's ball fishing with this week's fishing report. I got Sam and Madeline here today from Wisconsin. We're absolutely crushing the sailfish. We got a double sailfish on the line right now. This is sailfish number nine and 10 of the day. The fishing's red hot down here in Costa Rica in January, guys. We got sailfish, there's a few blue marlin. We had some good yellowfin tuna this week and some dorado as well. Along the beaches, we got snook, snapper, and roosterfish happening as well. When are you coming to see us, guys? The weather's beautiful, the fishing's red hot. This is Ben Gilmore, Marina Pesvela, Costa Rica. It's showtime in the region. Colder, slower winter months here in the New Jersey, Delaware Bay region. We have quite a few quality indoor fishing events, flea markets, boat shows, fishing shows to keep us occupied all the way through March. Now this Saturday, January 20th, the Fisherman Magazine will have a table out at the Delaware Valley Surf Anglers F Fishing Flea Market. That show runs uh, from 9 a.m. till 2 p.m. at the VE German Club. That's at 130 Davisville Road in Warminster, PA. Admission is $4, kids under 16 are free. If you want some details on that, you can call Joe Kelly. 267-918-4517. Look for John DeBona out there. And of course, next week, January 24th through the 28th, it's the New York Boat Show at the Jacob Javits Center on the east side, uh, west side of Manhattan, right there uh, along the Hudson River. Uh, that's open 8 p.m. or noon to 8 p.m. on weekdays, uh, 10 a.m. till 8 p.m. on Saturday, 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. on Sunday. Uh, the fishermen will be there at booth 658. You can find out more information at nyboatshow.com. Remember, whenever the Fisherman Magazine has a booth or table for subscriptions this season, you can get a new one-year or two-year subscription. The, the one year is $29.95, right? And then you'll also get the $20 Shorehold gift certificate as well as a four-inch Tsunami Topwater Popper, the new coastal 
I pop popper. Fantastic when striper action kicks into gear again this spring. I've gotten a lot of questions about the show lineup for 2024, especially on social media, Facebook, Instasnap, whatever you got. I, I, I would love, love to turn off every one of my social media platforms at this point, but it behooves me to do the very best I can to answer people's questions via social media, even if the crazy Karens of the interweb world don't like my answers. So here we go. First question that I had recently, Jim, what happened to the multi-day hunting and fishing show usually held around this time of year in Edison? Well, the Garden State Outdoor Sports Show, which also hosted the Garden State Deer Classic every year going back more than 30 years, as long as I've been at the Fisherman, that show did not happen this year. In fact, the Garden State Deer Classic has been taken over by the Federation of New Jersey Sportsmen's Clubs. That will be held separately later this year, March 1st and 2nd, the New Jersey Deer Classic and Skillful Anglers. But in place of the Garden State Outdoor Sports Show, the World Fishing and Outdoor Expo, which had been held up in Suffern, New York for about a million years, that was moving to Edison to be held this past weekend. However, that show too ended up being canceled in 2024. Yet when the World Outdoor Fishing and Hunting Expo was coming into Edison, somebody else went back to Suffern and a new promoter opened up the Rockland Community College Fieldhouse again with a show known as the Empire State Outdoor Sportsman Show. So your fishing and hunting show will be in Suffern, New York from February 29th, yes, it's a leap year, through March 3rd. The hunting and fishing show in Suffern is up there. No hunting and fishing show in Edison this year. You will find details in the January edition on that. It's on page 41 of the January edition of the Fisherman Magazine, plus your entire calendar of events for the month of January. Just keep in mind that that happens to be that Suffern show the one that's up in Suffern, it happens to coincide with the same week of the Atlantic City Boat Show, which is being held from February 28th through March 3rd at the Atlantic City Convention Center. The Fisherman Magazine, as always, will be at both events, but in Atlantic City, we've got the Fisherman Seminars as well. I'll be there all week. You following? Uh, is there still a hunting and fishing show in Suffern scheduled for late February? There are no hunting and fishing exclusive shows in Edison this year, but there are three other fishing and boating events coming up in Edison this winter. For my friends in New York, again, that is why we don't refer to shows in New Jersey by their town, because uh, it's too confusing when you have multiple events there in Edison. First up, from January 26th through the 28th, you've got the fly fishing show in Edison at the New Jersey Convention and Expo Center. Go to flyfishingshow.com. From February 15th through 18th, there's the New Jersey Boat Sale and Expo presented by the Marine Trades Association of New Jersey in Edison at the New Jersey Convention and Expo Center. Again, fishing seminars presented by the Fisherman Magazine. Go to jerseyboatexpo.com. The Philly Fishing Show happens to be held that same weekend, but that's out in Oaks, PA. I'll be there for three days, and I'm hoping to have my buddy, George, the Pocono Outdoors guy, standing right next to me in the booth. Then back in Edison, the St. Patrick's Day weekend, one of the biggest events that we do, the Saltwater Fishing Expo in Edison, New Jersey's Convention and Expo Center in Edison from March 15th through the 17th. You can go to sportsshows, sportsshows.com for more information. So you follow all these shows in Edison? See, when you ask me about the Edison show, I have no idea what you're talking about. I mean, the Edison show could be the New Jersey golf show in Edison in February. It could be the New Jersey bridal show in Edison in February. It could be the super pet show in Edison come March. The great sh train show or the chocolate show in Edison. For all I know, you're asking about the annual pole dancing competition at the adults only Exotica show in Edison next fall. I don't know. What I do know and I stand behind is what's published in the Fisherman Magazine. The calendar of events and the news brief, that's where I try my very best to gather up, write, and publish information to keep all anglers in the New Jersey, Delaware Bay region up to date on what's going on and where. Pick it up now or get your free copy this Saturday in Warminster, PA at the DelVal Surf Anglers. Uh, and then I'll, I'll tell you about all the shows we're gonna be at next week as well. Now, along those lines, 
Time is running out for an event being hosted by the folks at the Canyon Runner, their big offshore seminar series. That's scheduled for Saturday, February 3rd at Harris in Atlantic City. Uh, seminar, free breakfast, amazing door prizes, over 30 vendors. It's a great event. If you're into offshore fishing, you want to do this. It runs from 9 to 5. Tickets are $150 per person, but the Canyon Runner crew is getting to the end of the ticket run, and they say hotel accommodations on the cheap, they're about to run out as well, I believe this week. So if you want to make a weekend out of that Canyon Runner February 3rd offshore seminar series, you'll want to make your calls now, 732-272-4445, or you can uh, email Adam and the crew at Canyon Runner at info at canyonrunner.com. I'm no weatherman by any stretch of the imagination, but here's what the other folks, the weather folks, the guys with the degrees and the fancy suits on TV, that's what they have to say about the conditions coming up. The inshore marine forecast out of Atlantic City has a small craft advisory that ends this morning, February, or February, January 18th. But honestly, it looks pretty good come Friday. And then we've got the wind and we've got the cold and we've got everything else. But the big chill is certainly upon us heading into this weekend with temperatures expected down into the teens on Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Heated handrails are nice. Cancel culture, on the other hand, is not nice. Some folks don't like the message, pro or con, left or right, it doesn't matter to me, I've got a job, and that's to bring you the latest news and information on recreational fishing in the New Jersey, Delaware Bay region. That's non-cancelable. By all means, bring it on. More to tell you about next Thursday as we navigate our way through another winter here at the Jersey Shore. I will be here again, as I always am, every week, right here at thefisherman.com.